Hello, it's Philip Taylor speaking from Richmond Green Chambers in London. Today I'm looking at a book which has come to us from the Legal Action Group, which is the Access to Justice charity. It's an important book because the um, LAG LAG uh, produce a lot of very useful work for practitioners in the area of um, social law, including um, housing and homelessness. The one I'm looking at today is a book they've been publishing for some years now called The Manual of Housing Law. It's now in its 11th edition. It's been edited and written by two people, Andrew Arden, Queen's Counsel, and Andrew Diamond. <coughs> um, this is the book here. We'll have a look at it. The review I title I've given for this, and I'm the lead writer on this book, is a new edition on housing law from LAG at just the right time for the post-COVID era. Now, that's probably a little bit optimistic, but I thought I would um, uh, at least approach it that way. I'm recording this in January 2021. Uh, the book's only just uh, appeared. We are right at the height at the moment of the COVID pandemic. Uh, we've had, an, again, an extension on the number of um, um, weeks, in fact, before any action can take and so in on terms of repossession so the moratorium still stands let's have a look at the book though because it covers more than just repossessions there's the front and there's the spine you probably can't see very much at the back i will in the review tell you a little bit about what's actually in the book um, the back of the book is the index and you can see from that that the index is by paragraph numbering so it's reasonably clear to find things. It's quite a detailed um, index, in fact, at the uh, back, starting there. Then right at the back of the book, you can see <coughs> the structure. You can see the paragraph numbering, which is at the sides. And, of course, there are, I believe, the, in fact, I don't think there are in this, uh, there aren't any actual um, footnotes because they are, contained within the, the actual chapters themselves. We go to the front, there's the front page there. Then there's a <coughs> some detail about the two authors. Um, and then there's the actual front page itself. Some blurb about lag and then there's a preface which is quite helpful. It's um, obviously dealing specifically with what is in the new edition from the previous edition. There's a lot in the preface and it's well worth um, reading. It's dated the 30th of September and my review, as I say, was written at Christmas time and I'm doing this recording at the beginning of 2021. There's a table of cases, lots of cases of course in um, housing law. Then after that you've got statutes to follow. You can see after that um, statutory instruments and then after that we have the table of European legislation still relevant today. I know we've left the European Union, but we still have a lot of uh, relevant information. And there's a table of international conventions. And then we get to chapter one. You see the structure. There is a nice index at the beginning, which sets out what's actually in. And it says, chapter one, classes of occupation. It's the type of occupation you can have. In other words, basic English land law provisions of freehold and leasehold and actually common hold. And then after that you get into the introduction itself. As I say, no footnoting as such, but for each of the chapters um, you've got a lot of very useful information. Um, and as I say, the, the basis of it is that the you should be able to find things very easily throughout the book. Um, again, as I say, with each one You've got the paragraph, you can see the paragraph numbering, so everything is self-contained. Then you go straight into chapter two, no footnoting at all, then straight into uh, security of tenure and eviction. As I say, the total number of uh, chapters, which I don't think I actually worked out in the end, I don't think there are um, that many chapters uh, in total. I'm just trying to find the actual list of chapters. Um, I think the total chapters, 14 actually in total, that's correct, yes, there we go. And total page is 600. Plus, of course, quite a lot at the beginning, which is with the um, with 
the huge amount of case law. Now, what do I say about the book? This is what we say. The Legal Action Group, of course, well known to many of you, I'm sure, comments that when the first edition of this work appeared, it was called, um, well, we know it as Manual of Housing Law Today, but it was actually published originally in 1978. And it was then known as Housing, Security and Rent Control. And bearing in mind the at that particular time, there was a, a Labour government in power and there were substantial views about housing, which are very different from current policies in 2021. Of course, the titles developed um, and it became, with the second edition, a manual. And that's what we know as it, uh, as it is today. And of course, the 11th edition has been written by Andrew Arden, Queen's Council and Andrew Diamond. And their aim is a singular text to bring together housing law as a subject for practitioners starting out in housing law. It also is, is applicable to a range of people. And I'll give you the list. That's non-specialist practitioners who need ready advice on the subject lay advisors and students both of housing um, studies and of law as well as officers of local authorities councils that is and housing associations and i think that's important because it has a wide applicability and of course we think that the authors succeed admirably in their mission and they make our lives as practitioners much easier into the bargain with work of this um, s standard and can i also say that, that these books are actually seen quite regularly in the courts. The LAG publications are a well-known well site, certainly in the county courts, and they are referred to by a wide range of practitioners. And I'd like to thank everybody at LAG for, for the work they do, because it does make it much easier for all of us. The manual, of course, is designed to enable the reader to understand housing law as a whole and to apply it, whether it's to do so with the problems of, say, individual individuals or the policies and practices of landlords and local councils and the central message of the authors is this that housing law is a subject not to be studied in the abstract but to be applied and we found therefore that the book is actually an invaluable reference guide which is why it will be seen certainly in the courts and in the citizens advice offices and and quite a lot of reference libraries when they're course open. It's obviously a useful guide for busy practitioners because we can get quick answers uh, or a source of reference at our fingertips. That's exactly what you're getting of course with, uh, with the manual here. And it's throughout its editions over the years it's brought a, a wealth of history and of expertise to the subject. Arden has been writing about housing law for 40 years. He's recognised as being at uh, the forefront of the development of modern housing law, as we would call it, contributing to and helping to shape the subject through practice in leading housing cases in the senior courts. It's variously been described, and I don't know whether you like this, as the preeminent expert or the godfather of the subject. Uh, impressive titles indeed. Now, Andrew Diamond is also a founding member of Arden Chambers, which is where this germinated, in the current works anyway. And he's a leading expert on housing law, and we're very grateful for his expertise. Um, now, together, the two Andrews provide us with the most authoritative introduction to this area of law. And I think it's extremely helpful, certainly for uh, people who are new to uh, this subject, that, um, you know, we have this type of book available. Um, <clears throat> because what they do is they take the reader through the complex landscape in a clear and accessible style. I think this book's quite helpful for some people doing land law because it does give you a slightly different picture and the land law problems in the examinations are quite often these days, thankfully, very practical in their nature. So therefore this book may be of some help for some parts of the LLB syllabus on English land law. Content for the new edition uh, covers these areas, and I'm going to list them because this will be what you may be looking for. It's classes of occupation, security of tenure and eviction, rent and other charges, other terms and rights, protection against rogue landlords, antisocial behaviour, domestic breakdown, regulation of social landlords, mobile homes and houseboats, homelessness and allocations, disrepair, contract and tort, and finally... Uh, housing conditions which will include standards, environmental health, 
overcrowding, multiple occupation and licensing. Now again, as I say, that's, that's running through the list of what's in the chapters. And so if, depending on what you're looking for, that's what you're going to get. Let me conclude by saying this. The manual, we think, remains an outstanding and invaluable guide to the changing nature of housing law in England and Wales. Uh, obviously that's as far as lawyers, uh, practitioners of course, the advisors, and they've got a large range of non-qualified but very experienced people, and of course then students of housing law itself. And in fact anybody who masters this book has mastered housing law is what is said, and I think that's true. So thank you to everybody. Now the date of publication of this paperback 11th edition is cited at the 27th of November 2020. Let's just have one last look at it. The front, the spine, and then you've got some stuff on the back. It's very difficult to read in this light and uh, I'm recording this in the evening so it's not the easiest way. I'm just looking at uh, some general stuff. Rent and other charges. That's one of the big areas. Again, that's in the middle of the book. You can see the paragraph numbering. Uh, chapters are quite nicely um, set out. And as I say, the one thing I do like about the, um, these books is that you get uh, a nice little index right at the beginning. And then you've got, just, just to find what you may be looking for, you've got a proper index at the back. So I do think it helps. And as I say, I don't know what 2021 is going to bring for anyone. Uh, I would like to see a complete end to any form of homelessness. I think that should be a priority. There should never be any excuses. There should always be a home for someone so that any rough sleeper should be off the streets. That should be the priority of any government. But also, it's quite clear, and it does say it right at the beginning of the preface, we do at some stage, um, in the absence of a housing code, which dictates how housing relationships are composed, there are almost infinite number of different types of housing relationships. That's really the problem. And again, I'm not trying to go on the European model, but I think we may be moving to an interesting new era um, after the pandemic and all the problems that this has thrown up. In the meantime, stay safe and thank you very much to LAG and everybody for an excellent new edition. Bye bye.